Hello, today is August 25th, 2020. I am Michael Walsh. I work at the Yonkers Public Library. I'm currently in Yonkers, New York, and I'm with Ruth Cambar, who is a representative of the Assyrian Studies Association. She's an oral historian and an archivist of the Assyrian America Diaspora. Um, we are here today with David Odishu. Um, David, could you just um, let us know where you are right now? I'm in Pompano Beach, Florida. Oh, okay. Thank you. David, do you give us permission to upload this interview to the Yonkers Public Library Digital Archive? and also available to the Assyrian Studies Association and the Library of Congress? Yes. Okay. All right, thank you. And All right. for use for other academic endeavors, so students who are studying, et cetera, can see it and listen. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Yes, yeah, so I'm just gonna start off with some of the uh, background questions about your childhood and so on. So, David, when and where were you born? April 12, 1937, Yonkers General Hospital in Yonkers, New York. What part of Yonkers did you grow up, grow up in? 217 Buena Vista Avenue, Last street facing the Hudson River. Okay, thank you. Um, did you visit any particular places in Yonkers growing up? Absolutely. What were some of those places? Well, public library, uh, various baseball fields, uh, Went along the Hudson River in boats. And uh, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, go ahead. I'm sorry. I, no, I made background that. noise. Oh, okay, thanks. Um, did you used to go to any particular places with your family in Yonkers? Absolutely. If it's a park. Uh-huh. Gathering with other Assyrians. It was a little field, and we had uh, a swimming pool actually there that we went to. And we went to picnics, Assyrian picnics, in different places. Sullivan's Oval was one of them, Trevor Park was another one. They used to have picnics on holidays and Assyrian food and entertainment, mm -hmm. dancing. Oh, very nice. Um, who lived in your household with you in Yonkers? My mom, my dad, and two brothers, which are both overseas now. Oh, okay. Um, were your brothers older than you or younger than you? Older. One eight years older than me, another one 11 years older than me. What are your parents' full names? Ishu Odishu is my father. Rose Odishu, my mom. Okay, thank you. And what were your brother's names? John was the middle brother, and George, my older brother, oldest. Did they have siblings? Your parents? Uh, I'm sorry, say that again. Um, did your parents have siblings? Uh, yes, I, uh, they were all in the old country, back in mm -hmm. the Persia, Udemia, and uh, I believe some of them are in Tehran now. I lost mm -hmm. contact, we lost contact with them all since the Khomeini uh, took over. So we haven't heard from any of them. Some migrated. Uh, do you, 
some migrated here. They live in California. My mm -hmm. mother, mm -hmm. mother's side, and on my father's side. Do you know how many siblings your parents had? I, I have. Uh, my mother had two brothers and a sister. My father, I'm not sure. I know he had several brothers and two sisters. Um, does your family have a religious background? Are you connected to any places of worship? Yes, my mother was Catholic. My father was Episcopalian. And my father was not raised Episcopalian. Mm -hmm. Did you attend um, any churches in Yonkers growing up? Yes, St. John's Episcopal Church in Yonkers. Mm -hmm. Were there any languages spoken in, in your home besides English? Yes, Assyrian. Mm -hmm. And my mother spoke several oh. languages, but not to us, to our friends. Yeah. Were there any language barriers between like your household and the community? Uh, I'm not sure you would put that in. I know that none, none in our household, no language barriers. Oh, okay. From um, like with the, yeah. From generation. Go ahead. Trying to shut this off. Well, no, you can't. That's right. I can cut that. Take it. That out. David, can you speak a little louder for me? Sure. Thank you. Okay. Um, David, what was your household like growing up? I got out. I can't shut this up. Sorry about that. Don't worry. Oh, that's okay. Uh, my family, we were very close. Mm -hmm. We all got along together, except uh, once in a while, my older brothers would put me in my place, so I got a little out of line. <laughs> that's the Assyrian way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mom was very uh, disciplinary, too, and uh, she didn't cut us any slack. And we all grew up to be pretty good guys, I would think so, mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. of our family. My father always talked to me as an adult, not as a child. He'd explain things, why I shouldn't do it. Instead of saying, don't do it, he would say, explain why, the ramifications if something happened. He always talked mm -hmm. to us as adults. And we all got along great. Yeah. Good. What schools did you attend in Yonkers? I attended PS Public School 19, Hawthorne Junior High, and Saunders uh, High School, Saunders Technical High School. Did you go to college or a university post high school? No, nope. right after high school, I joined the Navy. Oh, okay. Um, how long were you in the Navy for? Four years. What position did you have in the Navy? I was engineman second class, uh, petty officer second class. I, my main job was diesel engines aboard a destroyer. They were auxiliary engines. Our rail generators on up. They took over. I also mm -hmm. maintained all the auxiliary equipment outside of main propulsion. And my job was. Uh, it was peacetime, but my job was battle station was damage patrolman. Um, 
Were you aboard any ship, like any particular battleship or anything? Uh, USS Steinacre, DDR-863, which was a destroyer. Oh, okay. Um, so did you go to, like abroad to any like uh, different naval stations mm -hmm. across the globe? Yes, I made four Mediterranean cruises. Mm -hmm. My ship was home port in Norfolk and we took cruises to the Mediterranean. Caribbean. I hit most of the ports in the Mediterranean, France, Portugal, Spain, Italy, Beirut, Lebanon, Greece, uh, several other ports. I can't remember some of the names. Mm -hmm. little tap, little oh. oh, interesting. And what did you um, do when you came back, like out of the Navy? What kind of work did you do? I was a construction iron worker. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, how long were you an iron worker for you? I mean, how long were you an iron worker? 35 years. 30. Um, do you know anything about the education of your parents? Mom, my mother was educated in Catholic schools in Umia. My father, had no formal education whatsoever. He was too busy running away from the uh, Ottoman Empire, and trying mm -hmm. to keep alive. Right. But he read a lot. He, uh, I mean, he he was uh, very intelligent. He he knew a lot of history and everything like that, but had no formal education. Oh, I see. Okay. Ruth, did you want to ask the cultural identity questions? I'm not sure. David, did you say your mom's maiden name? It was, it was Malik. Malik, M-A-L-E-K? I, I, there's several spellings of it on different papers. It's M-A-L-I-K, M-A-L-I-C-K, and uh, I think it's M-A-L-E-K on different papers that she had. And so what does it mean to you in my internet? What does it mean to you to be an Assyrian? Well, I feel, I feel very proud to be an Assyrian because all the accomplishments we had done, uh, I, there was a lot my father used to tell me about it and I didn't believe half the stuff, not half the stuff, but I, sometimes I figure he's just, inflating it, but as I grew older and started reading about our history, I realized how, how much we did contribute to the world. And uh, there was recently, a few years back, uh, on YouTube come out, uh, The Assyrian Legacy, narrated by the actor George Kennedy, and he goes on and tells everything that we invented and everything that we had done, which I never knew. That's it makes me proud. Yeah. And when people ask me what nationality are you, and I have to explain to them what an Assyrian is, it's it, it's very difficult because they, I guess they don't teach it in schools. Some schools are a lot. Yeah, um, they they glossed over it because in the textbooks it's the ancient empire, and that's that's it. They don't talk about us today. Whenever they talk, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Whenever they talk about the uh, the uh, Armenian Holocaust, they never mention the Assyrians, uh, and we went through the same thing. And that, that sort of annoys me at times when I have to explain things. Well, we're working towards that. So I'm glad you are. I'm glad you are. We really are. Um, and. So as an Assyrian, did you, can you read Assyrian or did your parents read Assyrian? Yes, my mother read it, my father read it. Uh, I couldn't read it, but it was, uh, we went to an Assyrian school. I don't know if you ever heard of that. Yes. On, uh, on Riverdale Avenue at the club. And uh, I say to say, I dropped out because I wasn't interested in it. 
And um, do you remember who caught it? Yes, Robbie Lucy. Lucy Schleiber. Was Robbie. Yes. It's amazing. She taught people who are my age, too. So oh, she was wow. there teaching a Syrian. Wow. Um, and I asked him. So when you went to St. John's, did you go to any parts of these services in Assyrian or was it all English? Well, it was Assyrian and English. We had, uh, I'm trying to think of his name, it's Gasha. Was, a, was, it, uh, was it Johannan? Yes, yes, yes. He, he had, sometimes he said in Assyrian, we went to the Assyrian services. And so you mentioned Assyrian food earlier today. Do you eat it? The Assyrian food? Yes. yes. I uh, I learned to cook a few few dishes for my mom. Like she never what? had recipes. You always get put a little of this, put a little of that. How much I did when it's been at this or that? And uh, I used to watch her cook, and I learned. And, and uh, I have a nephew that makes kada. Really? Uh, yes, yes. And what's your nephew's name? David is mine, same as mine. David J. Odish. And, and so you do you, so do you make these foods in your house in Florida? Yes, yes, sometimes I make them, yeah. Like what, what's your favorite dish? Well, hurush. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Do you Love make it? Lamb. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Do you make the chodesh with beef or lamb? Lamb, lamb, of course. I know some people have switched to um, beef. That's why I ask. So I, I'm trying to get my aunt Shirley to help me make chad. And. Um, have you ever had a Syrian food outside the house? No, no, not unless I visit a Syrian family. Okay. No restaurants. Um, do you think any of the preparation for the food has changed, even for your mom when she came here from Ermia? I guess so. I have, a, I have an Assyrian cookbook. I don't know if you ever heard of it. Which one? It's, uh, it was, uh, what's an name? Susie Nouia and uh, Irene Yolda. Yes, the little black. Yeah. <laughs> yes. That's what you used to? Yep. And how about Syrian holidays? Do you celebrate any Syrian holidays? No, not really. No. And, um, Do you have any Assyrian music you like? Do you ever listen to Assyrian music? Yeah, Assyrian and mostly Armenian music, which is close. We, when I was growing up, was we had Armenian bands at all our affairs, the weddings and uh, picnics and bands. Yeah. And can you exactly where your parents were born? Say that again. Which towns were your parents born oh. in? My mother was from Gulpashan and my father was from Edeshay. And do you know what years they emigrated to the United States? When? Did you yes. say when? Yes. My father came here in 1914 and my mother came here in 1925. When he married, he went to France, married her in Marseille, and brought her over here. Okay. And um, so if he was here in 14, did he go back? No. no. He, uh, and there's another thing, he served in the army in World War, World War I. Okay. Yes, he joined up. So, so he came here and ha they, but she got married no, he Thank married her. Yes. Okay. Wait. I'll explain. I'll okay. He came in 1914. 1925. My mo okay. My mother migrated from Gulfashin to Mosul, Iraq, 
with her two brothers, a sister, and a mother. And from there, they went to Marseille, France. After things settled down, her sister and mother went back to Persia. And my mother and my father, they arranged a wedding for them. I guess uh, God, he was, you know what that is, right? Yes. They arranged a wedding. He went over. They got married in Marseille. And I believe they came back. They come to the United States, and I think they remarried here. Okay. They have a reception, you know. Okay. So the families must have known each other. Yes. Beforehand. All right. Okay. And um, so let's talk about some of the hardships. Did your dad talk to you about leaving Armia and why he had to? Yes. His father, from the stories I heard, when they, his cousins would come over our house for holidays and they'd be talking, and I, as a child, I'd try to listen and absorb things. His father was a leader of the tribe, the Babo Shana tribe. And he was the elder of the tribe, the town. And they were, uh, they used to go to market, they were farmers, and the Turks would come and attack them. And he told me stories when he was they throw the back at him with the vegetables. His brothers on horses would fight the Turks off the swords. His father got wounded. Dang Green said in his arm, they wanted to amputate his arm. He refused it. He wanted to die as a whole man because he was the village elder, whatever that was. And my father witnessed that. His older brothers sent him to Russia. From Russia, he worked as a painter, learned the trade. From Russia, he went to France. From France, he came to the United States. My mother, from what I understand, she was married prior to my father in Tupac. And she had an infant daughter. The Turks came into the town, rounded up all the males of the village. Bishops, priests, put them in the churchyard and machine gun them. A daughter got sick. She couldn't get medication because she was a Christian. Died in the wrongs. That's when she migrated to Iraq. And the hardships, I, when she talked about it, she liked didn't didn't elaborate too much on it. That's what I always understand was that they killed a father and a husband. Her joy. And so, did she? Do you know if she came down with other Assyrians? Was she part of that march out? I believe so. When they went over the mountains in, into Iraq, yeah. into Mosul. Very sad history. Shame. And, um, so you already explained to me how people were separated and um, when your family came to Yonkers do you did they come directly to Yonkers when both of them emigrated here my mother did with my father but my father when he first immigrated he was in New Britain Connecticut with a cousin that was cousins before he joined the army <clears throat> excuse me and um, do you know why Yonkers? Uh, I guess because there was a, a Syrian community in Yonkers at the time. And uh, that's from what I understand. And do you know any stories that they talk to you about any stories from the old country, like when they were kids or anything, you know, your dad told you about Assyrian accomplishments, but what were some of those stories that were there any that they talked about? Well, the, the accomplishments were actually about history, what we what the Assyrians accomplished. You know, he told me that they. they and how that, about family? Yeah, about what? About lifestyle in Iran. What was the lifestyle like over there? Well, before the Ottoman Empire, I guess it was. Happy and uh, normal lifestyle until the Ottoman Empire, and that was it 
uh, everything collapsed for them, the Assyrians. Yeah. And um, do you have any particular artifacts in your home that are from the old country or that remind you that you're a Syrian? I've got, uh, I used to have the Simal or Samavaz. I gave them to my niece and uh, she has them. A neighbor of mine, when I moved down, one of to a neighbor of mine, but she loved it. You know, I don't know, husband they couldn't figure out what it was. They thought it was a trophy. I had to explain everything to them. Yeah. I gave gave it to them. She, his wife, really liked it. Very cool. And so, when you emigrated to Yonkers, can you describe the Assyrian community in Yonkers when you were a child? Oh my God, it was, how can I explain it? It was so close. We referred to, they weren't our relatives or uncles, but we referred to them as uncle. Everybody was uncle or enter. It was always, or Mr. and Mrs. It was, it was always respectful. Uh, every Assyrian home welcomed you like, like you were their own child. Uh, the dances we had, the club, the picnics, uh, growing up with other Assyrians, uh, your uncle Kenny was one of my closest friends. I grew up with him. The Campbell family, and they lived right across the street from me. Your dad, your uncle uh, Bobby, what a great family. And, and I remember your, on the other side, your mother's side of the family, your mother, Blendina, and father Nick. And Blendina always had a smile on her face, always. My grandmother, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Always had a smile on her face, always. And you, your grandfather, Nick, was such a great guy to talk to at times. And that's that's what I liked about the Assyrian community. They talked to us as adults, or even when we were kids. And they always taught us things that uh, to be loyal, obey the laws. And we did that. You know, the, the very, very few of us ever gotten any trouble. Yeah. Rarely, very rarely. And it was a great community. I, I used to enjoy going to the clubs and the picnics and it was just a wonderful way to grow up. Right, right. And I don't regret any part of it. So um, I know, you know, Ken about some of the trouble he got into, nothing major, but just with his mom. <laughs> oh yeah, well, it's all our moms. Oh my God, I I can't tell you the beatings I pulled from swimming in the Hudson River. Yeah. <laughs> and I yeah. tried to get out of it, and she smelled the oil on me. And <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> very funny. Um, and so, what do you know about the Assyrian homeland, or a discussion about acquiring a Syrian and a Syrian homeland now? Oh, that would be great. I, I don't know much about it, but that would be great. Tell me why. Why do you think it would be important or not? Well, according to history, the Assyrian Empire was the, mostly the whole Middle East, and now we have nothing. And we started Christianity, frankly. We started, uh, we invented so many things. Uh, aqueducts, viaducts, from, when I, from that movie I was telling you about. The yeah. Syrian legacy. I don't know if you've seen it or not. but I have, I have. Yeah, it, and, uh, and here we are, nobody knows about us. And that annoys me in a way. It, it's, it's just like, I have to, well, like I said earlier, Somebody said, what nationality? I said, I'm an Assyrian. They said, oh, what's that? And I got to explain the whole thing to them. Oh, is that like a Syrian? No, it's Assyrian, A-S-S-Y-R-A-N. Look it up, I tell them. And, uh, and it's, it's, that's how I feel about it. I wish we had something. Yeah. And um, so for yourself, was your family ever political, like even in the club or anything about Assyrians in reference to Assyrians? Uh, in which way? I don't know. Did um, your dad 
um, have any role at the Assyrian Club or? Oh yeah, he was a member of the Assyrian Club. My mom was a member of the Assyrian Club. They called it the Destifute, the, the sewing club. Can you repeat that? I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. They call it Destifute. In Assyrian, it means, you know, knitting club, it's sewing club. Futa means sewing, and this is the, the club. And uh, she belonged to that. The, I remember during the war, they used to knit uh, comforters. Uh, what the, the other name for them? And they used to. I, I actually, I had a photo of that um, for uh, the Red Cross. They would give yes, them. Exactly, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And. Um, what do you think, as an Assyrian, you've actually inherited from your family, your traits? Oh, boy. To be faithful, to be honest as much as you can, uh, be proud of what you are, uh, carry on the Assyrian tradition if you can, and uh, just uh, to love family, friends. They taught us a lot. Yeah. So much, so many things I can't remember, but they taught us a lot. You know, it's like respect was the most important thing. Becomes ingrained in you too. So it's not, yeah. it's the point. And, um, so I'm wondering, are there any stories or anything you want to tell us that we may not have asked you about? Uh, trying to think. I, oh, by the way, you sent me a picture of Joe, Joe Lazar? Yes. Okay, was that his father? Or uh, was it Joe? It's Joe. Okay, I'm going to tell you a story about Joe. You got time? Yes, please. Did Joe live in Yonkers? Yes, he did. Lived on Riverdale Avenue. Okay. I was when I was in the Navy. Joe was a career Navy man. When I was in the Navy, we pulled at Palermo, Sicily, and there was a repair ship. They called it a destroyer tender. That took care of any 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 damage to the ships and stuff like that. If we need parts, so I needed a part for one of the engines. I went aboard the tender to get the part. Who comes walking out of the hatch? Joe Lazar. I holler in the Syrian, Lazar. That's the other. He turned around, he says, Bad. You know, he goes, you know, Mila, outside of Maywood. And I said, um, I turn around, he turns around, he sees me, he says, Dave Odishu. Oh my God, it's a Joey Lazar. Incredible. And, yeah, and he, he commanded a Jeep. He was on the ship quite a while. He was in the Navy for a while. He commanded a Jeep with a driver. And another fellow, of four of us, we toured the whole Palermo in the Jeep. I've got a picture of us in the Jeep. I'll send it to you. Please do, yes. Yes. But the uh, is that I am working with his granddaughter. Through the Assyrian Studies Association, hide him for me. Oh, you, you, you got paused there for a while, I didn't hear you. Can you hear me now? Yes. So ironically, his granddaughter is working with me on the board of the Assyrian Studies Association. Oh, She's wow. in Chicago. And I, someone identified the photo. I found it among my father's stuff. Mm -hmm. And I, um, I sent it to her the other day and said, are you related to this man? And she said, that's my grandpa. Oh, wow. So I'm sure she'll also be thrilled to see that picture. It's a small world. Um, during the war, my dad even told he was abroad and he was in a nightclub and a man came up to him and said, Bobby, and actually thought he was my uncle Bobby instead of Bill, but he recognized yeah. Cambar. It was very funny. Wow. Yeah, yeah, wow. Yeah, yeah, oh. I'm gonna send you the picture. I'll be sitting in the back behind the driver and Joe's in the passenger seat alongside the driver. Okay, that's fabulous. That yeah. That's fabulous. 
All right, uh, David, if you have any photos, old photos or anything uh, you wanna scan and send me for the exhibits, I'd be more than happy also to archive them. Okay, uh, I, I've got a ton of pictures. I've got my mother's naturalization papers, if you like a copy of that. If you, you have to scan them though. Yes, yes. And, and my, my father's discharge papers, his naturalization. Yeah. Well, he got he got a citizen as soon as he got discharged. The servant. Yeah, you have to scan them at a three hundred DPI. Okay. Okay. I'll figure, I'll figure that out. Okay. Um, some of the stuff I I had scanned elsewhere. Um, if you want me to scan the materials, I can do it as well for you if you ship them to me. But that's up to you. Yeah, I could ship the articles of paint the pictures to you. Yeah, I'll scan yeah, them sure. back to you. Sure. All right. We're compiling an archive of Assyrian documents, etc. So. Okay, I, I got the pictures. I'll, I'll, I'll write down what they what they stand for, what they were. Okay. I said that my mother's citizenship papers, my father's naturalization, and I don't know if you'd be interested, but during World War II, he worked for Colt Firearms, and I got his ID card. Yeah. I, I could send you that. Um, and uh, I'll send you my address in an email. Okay. All righty. Good. All right. Talk with you soon. Thank you very much for agreeing. For Thank you. I hope I was helpful. You, of course you are. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you Thank so you much, all. David. Thank you. Take care. Bye. Okay. Goodbye. Bye.